Tonight what I want to do is I want to just take another look at Jonah chapter 2. And, and um, one of the things about Jonah 2, aside from the fact that Jonah is running from the Lord and has been disobedient to the Lord, one of the lessons front and center in Jonah chapter 2 is that God always answers. Look at it in Jonah chapter two and verse one. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the belly of the fish saying, I called out to the Lord out of my distress and he answered me. Now here's the reason why I'm bringing it up because there's some of you tonight and you really wonder if God's gonna answer. And that works against effective praying. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him, this is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, anyone who comes to him must believe that he answers. You have to believe that you're going to receive from God. God wants to work in your life. Sometimes you have an idea, some people have the idea that, well, John, he might answer your prayer or he might answer my mom's prayer, but I don't know whether he'd answer my prayer. And a lot of times what happens, what it's the root of that insecurity when it comes to prayer is that you look at your life and you're saying, I'm not where I wish I was. I'm not where I know I need to be. And so I'm not sure God's gonna answer my prayer. It's really one of the disadvantages of not walking as best you can, as much as you can, close to the Lord. Because it, it causes an instability in your faith. But here's the thing that's very interesting about Jonah is uh, God, God does answer his prayer. I want to give you three quick things. Number one, God answers us even when we are guilty. Just to point out the obvious, when Jonah's praying, he's not on his way to Nineveh. I mean, he's, he's been thrown into the ocean. He's running from God. He's rebelling against God. He's going his own way. That's why he's inside this ginormous fish. And some of you are in trouble tonight because maybe of your disobedience. Maybe you look at your situation, you're saying, I don't feel like I can ask God to help me because I know why I'm in trouble. I know why I'm in the storm. I know why I'm having this battle. I know I'm the one who did it. I'm the one who caused it. And you've been on the run, or you've been living that self-centered, self-absorbed life, and now you're wondering, if I pray, will God even listen? Because maybe God's just saying, you know what, you deserve it, and this is part of my punishing you. And you know, listen, all of those things are not helpful necessarily toward prayer in this moment. In this moment, you have to believe God answers prayer. I mean, that God gives people another chance. I'm not advocating that it doesn't matter how you live because the Bible says this in Psalm 66, if I had cherished sin in, my, sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. So if you're loving your sin and you're wanting to pray and ask God to help you, that's not going to work. Jonah in this prayer is going to say, in the first part of verse 9, he's going to say, I will fulfill my vow. So Jonah's turned back to God. What I'm saying to you is if you're in a place where you're saying, I'm willing to turn back to God, your life may be a mess and you may be the source of that mess and your selfishness could be the cause of that mess and you could be guilty up one side and down the other. But the fact of the matter is, if you'll turn to God, he will hear you and he will answer your prayer tonight. That's great news. And the enemy wants you to think, oh no, he won't. Look what you've done. Look where you've been. Look who you are. And why would God, why would God, you wouldn't answer your prayer, so why would God do it? And that's a lie from the enemy. Because God is a God who answers prayer. In Psalm 107, we read this, it's so awesome. Some sat in darkness and deepest gloom, imprisoned in iron chains and misery. They rebelled against the words of God, scorning the counsel of the Most High. I mean, so they were like, you know what, God, we don't care what you think. But now all of a sudden, they're in chains, they're in a bad way, and they cry out, Lord, help! And he saved them from their distress. 
Here is, here is God and he helps people in their distress. In Jonah chapter one, two and verse one, it says, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish saying, I called out to the Lord out of my distress and he answered me. God answers us. Listen, your, our prayers are not based on God answering if we deserve it. If it's based on that, we're not any of us gonna get very far. God, do, God delights to answer because God loves people, because God loves you, because God wants to show himself powerful in your life. And so God is a God who always answers. And if you come to him tonight, no matter what's been going on in your life, if you turn to him and say, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start walking with you, he's gonna answer. And maybe some of you have already made that commitment, but you're just, you're in trouble. You're looking at your life and you're saying, I've got all these things that are out of whack. You can ask God to help you, and he will. And don't ever say, well, you know, he's not going to because, because of what I've done, because of who I am. Because Listen, that's, that's the enemy trying to discourage you and to try to keep you from praying a prayer of faith. The second thing I want you to notice, God answers us in impossible situations. Here's Jonah, Jonah 2 and verse 5, the waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me, weeds were wrapped about my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. I mean, it doesn't get any more desperate than this. He's gasping for breath. There's huge waves. There's pounding rain. He's drowning. And all of a sudden, the fish swallows him. And Jonah is thinking, I'm good as dead. The game's over. And you know what happens in life? The details, no doubt, are different. But the desperation some of you are feeling tonight is exactly the same. You're sitting here tonight and in a situation you're facing, could be your marriage, you feel like it's over. Could be your relationship within your family, a son or a daughter that's in rebellion and maybe you haven't handled that right and you're thinking it's over. Could be a work situation and you're thinking, man, I've, I've so blown it, it's over. Could be, you know, medical, the diagnosis is grim and, and the darkness won't lift and you're thinking it's over. Or you're praying, sometimes you and I will pray and then what happens is things go from bad to worse. And your question is, how can there be hope in that moment? Look what Jonah says in verse six. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you, yet God brought up my life from the pit. Oh Lord, my God. In the life of faith, there's always that yet God. There's always that but God. I, I, was, I wasn't going to make it, but God, help me. The relationship was over, but God, help me. I didn't know where I was going to go, where I was going to turn financially, but God, help me. It looked really bad. Everybody said, you're finished, but God, help me. He's the God who loves to show his power in impossible situations. And let me just encourage you, the more impossible your situation, the more God delights to say, let me show you what I can do so the people around you can see it, so you can be a testimony of my power, of my grace, of my ability to give you a divine turnaround. Number three, God answers us at just the right time. He's not early, he's not late, he's always on time. You say, it hadn't happened yet. God is on time. He's at work. Look at it, Jonah 2, 7. When my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. Sometimes we pray and what happens is, it seems to us from our vantage point, God is not doing anything. So Jonah, I believe Jonah's praying up front, that Jonah's praying at the start. I don't believe Jonah has a lot of time to pray when he's swallowed by that fish. But he is praying 
and it doesn't seem God is doing anything. And what a lot of people do is when they're praying and they don't see an answer, then they conclude that God isn't working or God isn't willing, and then they stop praying. They say, well, it must not be the will of God or I don't see God doing, and they get discouraged. They say, what, what, what's the use of doing this? Because I'm, there, I'm praying all the time, but I don't see God. I don't see God coming. I don't see his help anywhere. But even when we can't see God working, or we can't see how God is working, we need to believe that God is working. Tonight, God's at work in your life. If you, you say, you know what? I came down to the altar before and I haven't seen a change yet. God is at work. When it seems nothing is happening, God is at work. When it seems that, that the people you've been praying for haven't changed a bit, God is still at work. When you, when you don't see any sign yet that anything's turning, God is still at work. You say, but John, I prayed and it didn't get better, it got worse. God is still working. Think about Jonah, he prays and it does get worse because I believe he may have died. That he prays and he dies, but that's not the end of the story. And your situation could look as lifeless to you, it could look like it's totally dead, but God is the God of salvation. God is the God of resurrection comebacks. God is the God who is able to resuscitate your situation. He's the God who raises the dead. He is the God who can bring things back to life. And Jonah's declaration at the end of the chapter or look at it in verse 9 is salvation or you could say deliverance belongs to the Lord he's the God who rescues he's the God who restores he's the God who works he's the God who delivers he's the God who saves and he's the God who always answers always so tonight the God who always answers wants you to ask. He wants you to pray. I don't know what you need. I don't know what you're going through. I just know he's the God who always answers. And I'm just, tonight, let faith rise in your heart. Listen, the worst thing you can do is debate what I'm saying in your mind and say, you know what, I'm just not sure in my situation because of this. You know, forget all of the extenuating circumstances, forget all of the details that seem to cloud your faith and simply say, you know what, that's the word of God. And God always answers, so I'm going to ask. I'm going to believe he's going to do it. You may have asked before, keep on asking. You may have said, God, heal me. Keep on asking him to heal you. Keep on believing. You say, it hasn't, you, you say but John, it hasn't happened yet. Well, tonight might be your night. You know, I, I, you have to have that kind of faith that says, you know what? I believe he's a good God, I believe he does good, and I believe he's a God who answers prayer. And the word of God is true, and if I keep going, there's gonna be a moment when he is going to answer. Why? Because he's the God who always answers.